as Phil Hansen oh. came in, and now Sally Yolich is off the road. And he's in the gravel the and can't move. The championship leader in LMP2 Pro-Am, and those rear wheels are firmly embedded in the gravel stones. Big, huge drama in LMP2 Pro-Am, and for the overall, for that matter. It's at turn eight, and he had plenty of warning that that was going to happen, but then became, completely became a passenger. Sideways he goes. Whilst you're listening to that interview, there's been an absolute monster crash for Jonas Reed in the Proton Competition 99, wiping at least three corners off that car. And Proton almost preparing spares, but I think it's in vain. Let's hope Jonas is OK. It kind of happened out of frame in the replay we've just seen, but it's at the top of the hill at Portimao. Surely this is going to be a safety car. There's also the incident at Turn 5 with the stranded 31 that's being dealt with, but a most unusual place to lose the car. Is that an outlet for the 99? Oh, it's now been replaced by the letter S to tell us it's stopped on the road. I can probably find out through other means, but is it low tyre temperature again on wet weather tyres, Graham? Looked at him all by himself and whether or not he's got himself onto the kerbs. Actually, all corners are on that car. It's bodywork for the most part, at least what we can see. Where the, uh, window, the door is open of the car. Jonas is still aboard. So, CF Sports not on that. Was that smoke? I think it has to be. It's not going to be spray. Oh, it's, it's on a fire. fire. A huge fire. It's the, the 13. It is. It's the 13. That is the championship right there. They had to win the race to keep it rolling to Sunday. And the bigger concern here is that the driver can get out safely before that fire really it's takes hold. Fire. The problem is the wind is in the direction of the cockpit now as well. So blowing those flames and the fumes in the direction of, thankfully, Wyatt Brickercheck getting out of the car. And all he can do is look back at the state of the 13. And I'm minded now to think back to, was it this time last year when into Europol competition had a horrendous meeting here at Portimao as well? It was the well, final 15 minutes of the season. Where their car ended up in the gravel down at turns one, two and three, and a driver was on his knees because of the disappointment levels. They had to win today, but the problem here is that it may well finish the car for Sunday as well. Yeah. And that is season over for into Europol competition. Very little warning of that at all. The smoke suddenly appeared at Portimao, and look at the reaction from the Polish team into Europol competition. What do they have to do to win a title? Well, so many times they've fallen second place in this championship. Can't even count the number. Where did that happen? So he'd been around. And the uh, hairpin. And immediately started to smoke. So what's that an oil leak to start with? Oil on the tyres, maybe, yeah. and then instantly there's a fire. I think it was an oil leak. Yeah, a line that, that goes, that pops, perhaps. It may be the bumps, it might be a bit of debris, but going off on, on his own oil, Wyatt Brickerjeck at turn five, causing the spin, and then it gets far, far worse. Yeah, did I think was it's, I, I need to double check if there's an onboard extinguisher for those cars. It looked like some kind of system fired okay. and saved far worse damage that's the emotion that's the marshals are there there's still plenty of smoke being pumped out of the car unfortunately as i say because the, it's been very very windy all week here and the flames are actually being blown further into the car to the left hand side of alex then otherwise that could have been absolute calamity and now we do have calamity because the duquesne car is sideways and the 47 of pachito lopez was also involved with it as well thankfully it's off the racing line and allows everybody else safely through but think about the thought in Gilles duquesne's mind right now on course for potentially a victory and the car not quite out of contention but loses all of its places in nmp to. Oh dear, oh dear. That's uh, want to keep the microphone well away from that one, Steph Wentworth. Let's watch what happened. This, this is the replay. Please don't tell me it's Lopez again. Into the no, no, it, it was, was the Ferrari. 55. It was the 55 Ferrari, and that is being driven by David per David Perel, the South African driver, not able to slow in time. And there was definite contact then as Pachito tried to squeeze around the back of Neil Jardy's car. He didn't really have any other way to go at all. But round the outside, round the outside. off the road goes Jopfanutet. Is he going to force the issue? 
And this is where Watt Jakobsen. That's clever from Vaxivier. Oh, and the spin for Jakobsen, but was that contact from the from the cars behind? I'm not sure whether there was certainly a car off the driver's left as well, but that unfortunately will take the Dane out of this mixture to, with the potential of winning LMP2 Pro Am still involved as Matthias Besch. And I wondered whether was it Besch who made contact? The car comes from nowhere. Uh, it was the spinning. Oh, it was a, already, yeah, it was okay. a 20 car that spun and took Tristan him out. Vautier. And I think, by the way, Racing Team Turkey have taken two positions in that move.